Uh, okay, cool. Hi, everybody. Sam Breed from Quick Left. Um, so we've been working on a redesign of the TV module, and if you're not familiar with TV, uh, it's an interactive debug console for Happy that operates as a plugin. Um, wow, that's already uh, auto-playing. Okay, cool. So um, the uh, the main premise be behind what I'm talking about is that you know APIs and server-side applications are meant to be consumed, and so if you're primarily writing an API that's exposing itself as a series of JSON endpoints, right? There are going to be clients consuming that, and so clients are uh, are they're tricky, right? In simple cases, um, client you can get away with just having clients that are. Um, you know, meant to connect to your services, and they can usually like run your service local. If it doesn't have like a complex database or something, you know, or if you're using like Rails or something, you can you know just run the application everything locally. Your developers are happy. Feedback loops are really really tight. But you know, if you don't have services that are just one to one, or you're using microservices, or you have big data, or things that are more complex. Um, or half your stuff is private, or half of it's work in progress and not released, it becomes a real burden on your front-end developers to actually like make heads and tails of what API services are available. And there are really great lengths that, uh, that we go through to mitigate this, right? Like having uh, you know, documentation generators that you know, are also producing stubs that you're using. So you know, you're kind of, uh, the expectation is that you're losing some fidelity to uh, you know, what will eventually go into production. And so should clients need to run your entire API? The answer is absolutely not. They, there should be no expectation that if you're building something super complex, that the front end developer that's you know writing an application that sits on top of all of this awesome API work that you're doing should have to run that on their local stack. You know there are a lot of things that eventually just make this untenable. You know if you have a bunch of different database connections, if your project is is chopped up into a bunch of different micro microservices that are living in 15 different places, you really you know can't afford to have to take a bunch of setup time for everybody to uh, run your stuff locally. Some tools like Vagrant make this a little bit easier, and there are like the hope of having things even better encapsulated in the future. But you know, a lot of times the best case scenario is to just set up a you know a staging server that all of your front end developers hit, and eventually you're going to run into some problems where uh, d the developers on their laptops don't have the information that they need just based on the on what's being exposed to them over the wire. So that's where TV comes in. So as I said, TV is an interactive debug console, and this is a kind of blurry screenshot of it. Um, but I'll be showing a demo in a minute. And so what Quick Left has been doing over the past few months is uh, taking a look at the use cases behind TV and doing some some redesign, some rethinking. So. Um, Again, it's an interactive debug console, and it's gotten a bit of a facelift. So the old TV is uh, about as, as pretty as you can possibly make a table look. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit daunting when you first get there. It, it doesn't do anything out of the box. So it's, uh, it was a little bit challenging when I, when I first picked this up and being like, OK, well, I can kind of see what's going on. You know, there are tags grouped in. But you know, it's difficult to discover. It's difficult to filter. And unless you really kind of go through you know, cr this process of creating a debug ID and then making sure that you're sending that along as a query parameter uh, along with every one of your requests, filtering down just the stuff that, you're, that you want to look at um, is a little bit challenging. So um, along the way, there were a whole bunch of new features that, uh, that we were able to, to add in a, in a pretty, uh, pretty easy way. So things like type ahead filtering, favoriting, copying into clipboard so that if you do have um, you know, kind of server logging information or error logs, you know, it makes it super easy to just pick that stuff up. Drop it and drop it into chat and send it off to the uh, API developers who are working diligently to maintain this public staging server that that you're working against every day. Um, better user onboarding, a real pause and resume, so that if you do if you are developing against a staging service that is uh, quite busy, you can actually tell it to shut the fuck up for a couple minutes. And it's all built uh, for Happy 8.0 now. So a uh, little bit of demo time here. Okay, cool. So, uh, so this is TV. Um, my screen's not mirrored, so this is a little, a little bit tricky. So, um, what we're seeing right now is uh, is a live WebSocket connection uh, to a server we have running over here, and uh, what we can see is that. Um, 
as requests come into the server that are tagged with this debug keyword, we get information coming back about the requests that we can pretty print out here. You can see that we have custom, lo custom logging coming through that has our, our own tags associated with it um, that would unfold if it were actually JSON. You get um, has some some internal uh, logging events from Happy and uh, the same type of response payload stuff. This isn't necessarily meant to replace your your network panel and the in the debug tools, um, but it can really be helpful if you're just trying to get to the bottom of where a request is, um, why you're getting 404s on on a certain endpoint, and you know really being able to look at this stuff without having to you know ask for console access to the server or you know being able having to go and tail a log file or constantly bug an API developer about like hey why is this thing not working when I try this it gives you everything that you need to do and you can copy it to your clipboard and do things like like filters so if we just wanted to see the API requests or we just want to see the 404s and all that good stuff so um, and since it's uh, using a, a WebSocket connection Okay, there it is. Since you, using a WebSocket connection, you know we can pump a bunch of a bunch of requests into it at the same time and see them uh, and see them just just fly in. Um, I tried it with uh, with 50,000 requests the other day, and uh, it gets a little slow if you're sending like 50,000 requests over AB. Um, but it is a web page, so you can just refresh it and blows the cache away and stuff like that. So. Um, so yeah, um, this is a, a currently work in progress. Um, we've wrapped up the primary uh, development work on it, and we're going to be uh, just going through some code review and then getting it getting it landed in the uh, in the main module of TV right now. It's just a fork on the Quick Left account, but um, but yeah. So this is uh, thanks for letting me uh, come up here and talk about TV, and uh, yeah, I'll be happy to uh, take any questions uh, in the next break.